but the next step is really everything um, all the things that everybody has asked about. So how about your intraday gamma levels and how about how can, how can I bring them to training view? So in the next few minutes, we're going to show you how you can use the intraday stuff and also how, you, how can you bring it to training view very easily. So first of all, uh, the int we are also going to have an intraday dashboard. So you'd be able to actually access uh, directly the intraday stuff from, from here. For now, the uh, intraday um, models are under the ask section so simply come here and uh, uh, type in your ticker so let's go and look at we were looking at meta for example before uh, let's click on meta you can also go back in time right here so now uh, on the bot we used to have five days of history now we are providing you with three months of data so you can always go back in time click on the calendar here and just go back and, and see the models historically. And then here we have our intraday commands right there. So here we have our net gamma exposure, uh, zero DTE. So this would be the next uh, weekly in, this, in the case of Meta, but if you're looking at SPX or SPY, this would be the next uh, uh, day expiration. So the zero DTE options. And here you can access uh, the intraday command right there. So here you see you have the timestamp at 12.15. And then you also have the button right there where you can go back in time and see the previous snapshot. So you can have the 1045 and the um, 9, 945 and so on. So here you can go back and very quickly understand, okay, has there been any, any changes in the net jacks for the next expiration? Or if we want to look at the all the expiration, then we can see, okay, like what's the intraday net gamma exposure for all the option chain on meta in this case and very easy we can go back again look at the snapshot always right here go to the previous snapshot and then simply look at the change in in the data so these are obviously our main chart which before was the multi expiration and the all expiration these are intraday so they update uh, multiple times a day we also have our volume intraday so we look at zero dt options uh, in this case, obviously, for Meta is the next weekly. Uh, in the case of SPX, would be the next expiration. And then we show you the change in volume. Again, also uh, different time stamps. Here we have the 1215, and we can always uh, go back in time as well. So very, very easy. Uh, then also uh, we have our intraday trading view levels. So here we can have... Um, this is the, the meta, this is our timestamp. And then again, if we wanted to go back to the previous timestamp, uh, we can look at it right here. And then in a, in a second, we're gonna show you how to import those into training view. And then most important is really our JAX difference model. So when we look at the, uh, the intraday kind of gamma exposure, right? You know, you wanna understand basically where is the gamma increasing or where is the gamma decreasing and what are the strike levels that could become big reaction zones throughout the day so here you have the chart and you can spot it right there but what if you really wanted to understand the delta the changes in uh, uh, the jacks coming from different strike prices so we have our models right here one we show you the uh, jacks difference of the current timestamp versus the end of day uh, net gamma exposure so in this case we have our 12.15 snapshot versus the 7.45 snapshot. And again, let's actually go back uh, into uh, the different timestamp that we have. So we have our 7.45, our 9.35, our 10.30, uh, 12.15, 2.45, and 3.30. And uh, why do we have a 7.45 snapshot? Because very important, the options data updates, um, well, the open interest of the options data updates at the end of the session, but it is published only the next morning. So in order for you to get the updated open interest of today's session, you will see it tomorrow morning at around 6 or 7 a.m. in your brokerage platform. So we are capturing that with the pre-market snapshot. And then obviously we are also capturing the uh, the other timestamp so at the open the first five minutes we'll we'll take another snapshot and then we'll keep going for the rest of the day and we're going to keep adding more and more of these snapshots throughout the day so the first obviously the jacks difference versus the end of day shows you at the open what has changed compared to the previous day right so very important because imagine we have nvidia earnings or we have amazon earnings or we have like uh, the fed speaks and the next day 
maybe the situation has changed dramatically because a lot of uh, participants are repositioning uh, quite heavily. So you want to spot the changes. But also throughout the day, we're actually going to have another model, which is the JAX difference versus the previous snapshot. So in this case, what we look for is how has the 1215 snapshot changed compared to the 1045. And here we see the strikes that have seen the highest negative change in gamma and the po most positive change in gamma right there. And you can also, again, go back in time and maybe look at the, um, the previous one. So we look at the uh, 1045 versus the open. So we see obviously an accumulation of kind of positive gamma at these strike prices. And obviously we see also like our put support, our core resistance level. All right. So very, very important. But then like, what if you wanted to get a feel and contextualize this? What does this mean? And how can I quickly understand, even if I don't really know options data? And this is why we introduce our intraday liquidity summary. And I think this would be an amazing tool for everyone to kind of like uh, read, understand what's going on and go through like, what does this mean for you? What does this mean for the asset? So the first thing we want to look for is our gamma condition. So we have, we want to see intraday if there's any changes in gamma condition. So this would tell you, for example, that currently we are in a positive gamma, but there was a change compared to the previous one, if that happens. In this case, it's not happening today, but uh, we are in a positive gamma environment and we are in a core dominated environment as well. So very important because that can help you understand the volatility for the day, uh, maybe like the sentiment for the day and so on. Yesterday, then, Fabio, we were yeah. speaking about this um, only um, as I remember. So why is this important for risk management to look into this? Yeah, because basically, like, uh, if we go back to our liquidity snapshot, the first thing we want to look for every morning is really like, look at the gamma condition, look at, are we in positive or negative gamma? Because we know that in positive gamma, because of the way the market has to hedge those options positions, uh, we're going to see a lower volatility. So we're going to see like steady price movements, right? If we are in negative gamma, on the other hand, we could see an increase in volatility. And that doesn't mean, again, that the price is going to go down or drop or is going to uh, go up. It just means that it could actually move very fast. So for you, as a trader, knowing if it's going to be a positive gamma day or a negative gamma day could mean a lot because it could significantly in impact your risk management, your potential take profit targets, and also your potential risk, right? Um, then we want to look at how the net gamma exposure has changed compared to yesterday. So here we can quickly see that, for example, since yesterday, the net JAX has increased by 19.57 million, which is about 13% 30 increase. And it went from 148 million to 167.86 million right now. But also we want to look at how has the JAX changed since the previous snapshot. So since 1045, uh, net jacks has increased by 7 million, which is approximately 4.75% of jacks. And also we want to do the same thing with DAX because we want to understand, okay, if basically uh, where are, you know, what are the levels and what is the, the value that uh, market makers might need to hedge um, if the market moves. Uh, then obviously we look at volume. Volume is very important, especially intraday. So what we do is we look at the put call uh, volume ratio. So in this case, um, the ratio is now 0 0.37. Uh, above one, you are going to see basically uh, a higher level of puts compared to calls. Below one, the ratio is more kind of skewed towards the call volume. And we can also uh, see it right here where our call volume has increased 63% and it's 163K and compared to our put volume, which is only 60,000 60, right there. Uh, then we want to show you the top strikes with the highest volume. So here you have strike one to strike five. What are the strikes with the highest volume and are they on the call side or are they on the put side? So we see that, for example, there's a lot of volume on these puts and it could also mean that the market is moving higher and a lot of people are then closing those puts because maybe they are now 
out of the money or maybe they are uh, taking risk management and taking their hedges off those 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 levers right okay In short term fabio to 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 speak about this so with the intraday liquidity summary you'll be able to to get an an idea about um your risk management how you could be leverage on this if you see the gamma condition mm -hmm. secondly you see also the the hedging from the market how the big players are positioned itself, how they're hedging. Mm -hmm. You see it. And then we, we're speaking about the pull, uh, put and call ratio. So you see, yeah. the, see the position uh, in the market. And also now I remember there, there was many people who were speaking about, hey, can you show us um, the volume on the strikes? Can you show us the change? We was delivering this now. You see now the top five volume strikes. And this is really critical to know which strike have impact. Fabio was was going over this yesterday, and I say, Fabio, why is this important to look in, into this in the change, based on maybe targeting um, the something and, and and position sizing? Why is this important to look into the volume strikes? Because it, yeah, I mean, volume is very is very key, right? So intraday, obviously, open interest only changes once a day, but volume does update throughout the day. So knowing, for example, if we are in like a, a cold dominated volume environment, so in this case, we have a very low put call volume ratio. That means that obviously there's more activity on the call side, but also knowing, for example, that there's a lot of volume and the top strikes are the put side is very important because if we go to the price of Meta right now, So obviously you can see that the stock is up to 0.49% and this, the price is 607. So if we go back to our liquidity summary, it could very well mean that a lot of these out of the money strikes are now getting closed because the price is moving so far away from, from those strikes. So for you, if you are in a bullish or you know bearish position, it's like a, it could be like a very important sign of like, what's happening with the stock and look at the crazy momentum right there and also what's happening with the hedges so then you can combine that with our gamma levels and then obviously uh, we're going to go through also the rest of the liquidity summary but very very important to understand which are the highest strike that are getting a lot of volume as well i think for me we're getting a good question about this why does uh, put s5 have a larger volume than put s1 on meta why does sorry why does s uh five have a larger volume than put s1 yeah we are uh, yeah like we are inverting this so this is going to change so right now is five as the highest but it's going to become one so it's just an ordering issue yeah but essentially these are the top five strikes with the highest volume basically All right, the next part is also very important, right? Okay, so now we're talking about gamma levels and we're talking about our primary levels and our gamma flip levels, so our high vol levels. So what we want to monitor is how the, the core resistance put support and obviously the zero DT level change intraday. So for example, our core resistance is unchanged, it's still at 600 and it's 4.34 points above uh, below the spot price. So we are above, now the spot price is above uh, the core resistance level. And as you can see, uh, there was a strong momentum. So the core resistance, and we're gonna add the levels in a second, became a very strong inflection point right there. Uh, then we wanna look at the zero DT levels. So obviously also the zero DT core resistance is at 600. And then we have our put support of 565, which is about 40 points below the spot price. And also we have our put support 0D at 565. Uh, then we want to monitor our gamma flip level or a high vol level. So where does the market go from positive to negative gamma? And how is that changing throughout the day? So in this case, our high vol level is unchanged, 567.5. So we are way above the high vol level. We're in positive gamma. And then also we have our high level zero DTs, which is also unchanged 
and it's uh, at five cent five seventy two point five. Okay. Uh, and then finally, uh, we also want to understand what are the strike prices that are seeing the biggest gamma increase or the biggest negative gamma increase as well. So here we have, for example, our uh, 610, which has seen a 9.61% increase in gamma since the previous snapshot. Our 620, uh, our 635 has seen an increase of 28%. And also on the negative side, we've seen uh, a decrease of 1 million in jacks, which is 12% on the 580, 595, 582, and 590, right? So going back to, for example, our previous model, which is our JAX difference, the liquidity summary will allow you to understand this chart and will allow you to picture what are the strikes that are seeing the biggest increase or decrease in gamma volume and how are the levels changing. Let's see if we have any questions. Fabio, I think we get a really good customer feedback. Mm -hmm. And can you build, uh, please, this different screenshots for the futures, even if at the end of the day, so that we compare the last day with today? So uh, this would be also a really helpful one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with your, you can also use the dashboard on futures. So you can, if we scroll down right here, you. You can also, obviously, with the future, you don't have the intraday levels, but you do have the end of day. And then, basically, you will be able to add uh, add the futures to your dashboard. 